I have been doing Pokemon difficulty challenges for almost 10 years, and I have played every gen released. I consider myself very knowledgeable when it comes to the game's mechanics and how things work or should work. During a Nuzlocke challenge, one of the greatest tools you can have is knowledge. Knowledge of the game you're playing, knowing what Pokemon your opponents have, what stats, what moves, what is the physical special split? One of the mechanics that seems less understood, or at least unrepresented in one comprehensive place, is how trainer AI works with switching a Pokemon in following knockout. In this video, we'll look at why it is important to understand Switch AI, how the AI determines what Pokemon comes out next in the different generations, and some of the exceptions or quirks of the game's AI. So Zach, why do I need to know this info? Doesn't high damage just go burn, you never need to switch out? Well, not if you want to lower the risk of losing your Nuzlocke, based off the info that you can predict slash understand. If you know exactly what Pokemon will come out second on a team, you can look multiple turns forward in a battle and discover what will be the most successful strategy and what could possibly lead to risking a Pokemon. Think of your Nuzlocke like chess. You want to play multiple moves ahead and try to create the best situation for you to win. But you can already figure out where your opponent will be positioned so you can pre-plan how to capitalize on their mistakes. If you know exactly what Pokemon is coming out next, you can plan for a good type matchup and potentially get two or more kills, or you can plan what you're going to switch in next to counter your yourself and put you back in that advantageous position. Now let's get into some specifics. Starting with Gen 1, this is the easiest generation to memorize. All of your opponents go in team order. So if you have the information on your opponent's team, you know exactly what Pokemon comes out next without having to look at any other information about that game. In Gen 2, the AI starts to level up. The AI in Gen 2 starts by looking at what super effective moves your opponent has against your Pokemon. Additionally, it looks at the stab types of your Pokemon. Switching AI is only plus one, neutral, or minus one priority. So regardless if the enemy's Pokemon is two times or four times weak to you, they have the same chance to switch in. The same priority is given to a Mon that has a super effective type-wise with a super effective move as a neutral type Pokemon with a super effective move. For example, you have a Bulbasaur. Your opponent has an Onix with Tackle, an Onix with Fire Fang, Magikarp with Splash, Snorlax with Rest, and Charizard with Wing Attack. Charizard will always come out first because it has a super effective move and none of Bulbasaur's stabs are super effective. Next out will be Onix with Fire Fang, followed by Snorlax. They both have a neutral team priority because Onyx has a super effective move, but has a poor type matchup. Snorlax is neutral with both his moves and his type matchup. Onyx with Tackle and Magikarp are the last to come in because they both have minus one priority because of their type matchup against Bulbasaur. When multiple Pokemon have the same switch in priority, it goes based off team order. Gen 2 AI isn't too bad. They look for super effective moves from your opponent and looks for your stab typings. Let's move on to Gen 3. In Gen 3, the first check is, does the AI have a super effective move or not? If yes, next check if the Pokemon has the worst type matchup. Seems kind of like the opposite of what the optimal play is, but I think that is kind of the point. Make the AI good enough to punish you, but still have the game be easy enough that little Timmy can beat Steven. Let's look at an example. So you have a Charmander against a Squirtle with Water Gun, and a Bulbasaur that illegally learned Mud Slap from the black market. Hey, I'm uh, breaking the fourth wall here. Uh, I just want to point out that I'm an idiot because Bulbasaur can learn Mud Slap by TM and Gen 2. So, ignore my poor attempt at a joke. The game will always send out Bulbasaur because it has a super effective move and is weak to Charmander's fire type. Once there is no more weak types, the game will go in team order based off super effective moves. If there are no super effective moves left, what happens? Well, the game will choose a Pokemon that has the same type move as the Pokemon that was just KO'd. If you knock out a Pidgey with a Charmander, and there's Rattata with Tail Whip, and a Bulbasaur with only Razor Leaf, Rattata will come out next because it shares that normal type that Pidgey has. Once none of those checks make sense, the game will go then in team order. I think you know how this trend is going with these AIs. Gen 4 is no different. They wanted to change the Switch AI again, searching for that perfect balance. Gen 4 did not accomplish this mechanic. 
Gen 4 looks for super effective moves firstly, and includes non-damaging moves, just like Gen 3. The next check is what's the best offensive type plus a super effective move. Watch this fight against Eren in the Diamond Elite 4. He has bug type Pokemon that are always super effective against Umbreon. Heracross has the best type matchup, being super effective with both Bug and Fighting Stab. Beautifly and Vespaquin are super effective with Bug and neutral with Flying. Then last out is Drapion, because Dark is resisted and Poison is neutral. Now, let's talk about what happens when your opponent runs out of super effective moves. Here, we have a Bastiodon against the same Aaron fight. Heracross comes out first due to the super effective close combat. Once Heracross falls, now Eren's team has no more super effective moves. A strange mechanic that Gen 4 uses, the AI will now choose the strongest move based off the previously fainted Pokemon's stats, stabs, items, and abilities. Essentially, the AI uses assist with the knocked out Pokemon to figure out the strongest move from the rest of the team. Looking at this damage calc, the Bastiodon takes the most damage from Vespaquin's attack order using Heracross's stats, and thus Queen Bee comes out. Then Vespaquin would do the most damage with Bug Buzz from Beautifly. So Beautifly comes out. Then last in would be Drapion. Now let's talk about one of the primary exceptions. Here we have Articuno versus Bertha. Every one of her Pokemon have a rock type move. Now let's look at type matchups. Sudowodo has the best type matchup just being rock. But then why does Golem come out second? Shout out to Drew and his friends for researching some of these mechanics. His video and info will be in the description. So in Gen 4, single type Pokemon need a placeholder for their second type. So single types count as dual types of their stab. Sudowodo becomes a rock, rock type. And looking at a type chart would be four times super effective and four times super effective against Articuno with rock type. So the strange mechanic here is what Drew has dubbed as type chart overflow. Eight times effective Pokemon overloads the AI equation and places the priority of switch in to below neutral damage, but above resisted neutral. So Bertha sees Golem as quad effective plus immune. Then next out would be Sudowoodo at 8 times, Wishcash at neutral immune, and Hippowdon, who with his ground typing would be considered ground ground and would be immune immune. Luckily, Game Freak has stuck with the Gen 5 switch in AI all the way into the current generation. Gen 5 AI is no way perfect, but is still relatively simple to understand. Gen 5 starts by looking at strongest move, or specifically the strongest move, but it includes type effectiveness. It is important to note that the opponent's stab does not count for this calculation. You could have a Squirtle, and your opponent has a Ninetales with Solar Beam, and a Venusaur with Giga Drain. The AI will always go to Ninetales because of Solar Beam being 120 base power versus Giga Drain being only 75. If two Mons have the strongest moves, the tiebreaker will be the team order. But of course, there are some exceptions. If a trainer has one of the gimmicks introduced from Gen 6 onto Gen 9, these are trainers that use Mega Evolutions, Dynamax, or Terrasalization, they will always send out that Pokemon last. This means in certain situations, mostly in Scarlet and Violet, if a trainer has one, two, or three Pokemon in their party, and they use a gimmick, you know exactly what order the Pokemon will come out. And there it is, the history of Pokemon Switch in AI. I hope this video helps you better prepare and become more successful in your challenges. A master sheet for everything that we discussed in this video will be in the description below. I find that the Pokemon AI to be very interesting and unique, but they can be exploited to your benefit. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more guides and tips to learn to apply to your future Nuzlocks. Leave a comment too on what mechanics you would like me to look into next. I'm Zach, aka Kinglochamp, and I'll see you in the next class.